In this video, I'll introduce another probability function that is sometimes more convenient to use than the probability density or mass function uh, to calculate probabilities. This new function is called the cumulative distribution function. And in the continuous case, so in general, this gives you the probability that your random variable x is less than a certain value, lowercase x. So in the continuous case, uh, this is given by the integral from minus infinity to x of the probability density function. And we'll denote this by capital F uh, of x for a discrete random variable. We still have the probability of your random variable being smaller than some value. For now, we're going to add up the contributions from you know, the probability mass function for all x sub k that are smaller than x. And this is the discrete uh, variation of the cumulative distribution function. So sometimes in problems, you know the cumulative distribution function, but you don't know the probability density function. So it still allows you to calculate uh, probabilities of your variable being smaller than some value. Some important properties of this new probability function The cumulative distribution function is restricted to be between zero and one. So at zero, you, uh, you're, it's saying that your probability of being smaller than some value is, uh, is impossible. And if it's one, then that means that the probability of being smaller than some value is a sure, it's a sure thing. Another way of saying that is in the limit that lowercase x goes to infinity of your cumulative distribution function, this has to equal to one. So what this is saying is you're calculating the probability that your random variable is smaller than infinity. And this has to equal to one because it has to it absolutely has to be less than infinity. Likewise, as lowercase x goes to negative infinity, your cumulative distribution function has to go to zero. This is no way of saying that the probability that your random variable is smaller than negative infinity is zero. So it's an impossible thing to happen. We can also use the cumulative distribution function to calculate the probability of your random variable being in a certain interval. And this is simply given by evaluating the cumulative distribution at the endpoints of the interval. So it's easier than if you had the probability density function where you'd have to perform an, an integration. From our definition over here, and the uh, from the fundamental theorem of calculus, you can also say that the probability density function has to be equal 
to the derivative of the cumulative distribution function for a continuous random variable. Okay, so using these properties, the cumulative distribution function allows us to uh, oftentimes more efficiently calculate the probabilities of certain events. And as a quick example of that, we're going to apply this concept to the 1s electron of the hydrogen atom once again. So CDF will be for cumulative distribution function. So we wanna find the CDF of the 1s electron in hydrogen. And we'd like to verify our answer by calculating the same probabilities that we had calculated in the previous example. So the probability that your electron somewhere between the nucleus and a distance twice the Bohr radius from the nucleus. So by the definition of the cumulative distribution function of a continuous random variable, we, we can find the CDF by integrating the probability density function from minus infinity to x. Well, in this case, we'll call it because our random variable is the, the distance, the radial distance. With R of our radial probability function. And I won't go through the details of the calculation, but you should verify that the cumulative distribution function of the 1s electron is given by this expression. Then the probability that your electron is at a radial distance somewhere between zero and twice the Bohr radius. That should be a negative over here. You just need to evaluate this at the endpoints of your interval. So you evaluate your cumulative distribution function at two a naught and at zero. And this will give you the same result that we obtained previously. So uh, again, this offers uh, an alternative, which is sometimes easier to, to use than the probability density function. And sometimes the probability density function is easier to evaluate than, than this. In the next video, we'll uh, begin to introduce the idea of moments of a probability distribution by uh, presenting what's known as the first moment or the expectation value of a random variable.